It's Bob Maneke. completely butcher it like I did last year. It only took me a year of practicing to get close. Um, but you have to go easy on those simpletons. Um, and with her is Nima Eileen, who, uh, from, and I have to apologize because I don't know what they're talking about today. Aisha reached out and said, hey, I'm working on this project. I got a group of people who uh, we want to come be on the radio. And I said, how about tomorrow? And she said, great. And so here they are. And our friend Prosper is going around taking uh, taking pictures, and I'm, I'm not even going to attempt your last name because I would just make a. <laughs> and will you say it for me, Nima? Uh, Prosper, Mary Awesome. What's the order, Mary? Yeah, I'm going to Prosper, Mary Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, and so. The floor is yours. Tell us what you got going on. Okay, so I'm gonna let Nima kind of explain more about uh, Yube. Um, she was live because every single year we change presidents. So th this year I'm president of Yube, but wait, last wait, 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 back up, back <laughs> up. What's Yube? Yube, uh, let's say at the same time. United Burundian American, American Youth. American Youth. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I know that you guys are in it and this is your reality, but. You know, you gotta, you, gotta start yeah. from, you gotta start from assuming I know nothing. <laughs> uh, listeners know nothing, and then it'll all be self-explanatory and it'll be perfect. So, okay. Yube. Uh, so, Yube is an organization that the Burundian community started here in Lexington. Like, we noticed that there was an issue with our youth and our parents. Like, there was such a big barrier between them. Like, the parents had a hard time understanding the kids, and the kids had a hard time understanding the parents because, like, the kids grew up in America and the culture is so different from the culture that the parents grew up in. So we started this organization as a way to kind of bridge that gap and just uh, try to get both sides to understand, you know, like the different lives that they've lived, like the parents have lived and the kids live. So we started this organization and it started, last year was our official first year, actually in March. We had like a meeting where all the Burundian parents were there and we sort of brought this organization to the table and we said this is what we want to do, how do you all feel about it and they were very supportive of it and you know we started from there and uh, so far like we've opened up actually a community school here at Steve Academy. Academy. <laughs> thanks yes, to Miss really? yeah, yes. thanks to Miss Stevenson. Mm -hmm. We started coming here around August. Um, so every single Saturday from, at uh, first it used to be from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock. You guys are going to school on Saturday? Yes. yes. <laughs> Some of us have school every day. That's yes. Some, like me, I have school every single day. I have currently school on Saturdays and I have Arabic school on Sundays and then I have regular school through the week. Yes. Wow. But uh, at first we were doing 2 to 6 and then you know how like the sun was um, going down earlier. So we changed the time to 2 to 5. Um, so thank, thank, big shout out to Miss Stevenson, Principal yes, of Academy. Thank you so much. For allowing us to be here every single Saturday to um, educate the kids on a language and a culture that they are definitely missing out of. Yeah. So, so, so what is what does Kruni School look like? Um. So basically, we have like uh, four teachers. We have one that teaches the actual language. We have one that teaches um, the different cultures of Burundi. We have one that teaches geographic, geographic, and you know just different things like that and then we ha have a class that's called integration and that's where it's taught by uh, us, us like the members of Yube. the members of youth bay and like that's where we just sit with the students or with the other kids and we just talk to them and see like the issues that they're having with their parents and we figure out ways to solve that and we also have like times where we bring the parents in as well and we just talk about like how we, how can we fix these issues? How can we uh, fix the gap that's between the parents and the kids? So that's what don't forget so. snack time. Oh yeah, snack time. <laughs> and what is the, so so in terms of the the kind of barriers or whatever, what are the are you talking about cultural differences? Are you kind of talking about language differences? Are you talking about other other like what are the what are the sort of main topics that you guys are um, usually like digging into? Honestly, it's both. It's both. One of the uh, big things that we're targeting right now is language, the language barrier, because most parents, although they do know English, like their, their English is very limited. So we thought like instead of trying to get the kid, like the, the parents, parents to learn English. English, like that's going to be hard for them. Yeah, because and it's easy got, to learn the language. Yeah, they've yeah. got, they've got jobs, they've got like, you know, they've got to take care of the kids. So we're like, okay, let's target the kids and try to teach them 
a little bit of their culture and their language. That way it's easier for the parents and the kids to like communicate and also the culture as well. Like, um, you know, a lot of kids that are growing up here, they don't understand the Burundian culture and they don't understand why the parents are raising them the way that they are raising them. Because they go to school and they hear from their schoolmates, oh, my parents and this and this and this, but when they come home, it's not, like, the, same it's not the same thing. So we thought, you know, we have to explain to them their culture and why their parents are raising them that way. And also, not just the kids, but the parents try to, you know, make them understand that, you know, this is a different country and we don't want to completely change our culture, but we want to adjust to that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So how does, that, how does that conversation usually go in terms of, like, how you start to integrate kind of new world, old world, or like tradition versus, I mean, I know that's the point of tension, right? It's mm -hmm. like how you figure out how to be an American, how you figure out how to respect your Burundian culture, yeah. how you figure out how to um, show respect between the generations, and, mm -hmm. and, and how, does that, how does that usually sort of play out for you guys? Um, well, it's a work in progress. Heck yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it is, but like. Yeah, um, well, one of the things that we just try to tell the parents and the kids is that like we're not trying like you said we're not trying to completely change like you know who we are and like you know the things that you all grew up living and like you know the culture that you all have and we're not trying to like bring in the American culture but mm -hmm. we usually try to explain to them especially the parents because they're the ones who have a hard time understanding this but um, we usually try to explain to them that um, this is we're not in Burundi anymore like that's a given fact. It's not like something we can beat around the bush. And like, but this is we're not in Burundi. And if you try to bring, if you try to raise the kids, your kids the way you would in Burundi, that's gonna have an, a negative impact on both you and the yeah. kids. Yeah. So like, you know, we just try to basically just explain it to them, and like, you know, it's a work in progress. But so. like, is it, it? So is it? I guess that's where I get like. Can they even understand? Like, if you explain it to them, can they even like go, "Oh, I get it," or is it a case of like you explaining? Is it does it have to be from the context of their understanding of? So, are a lot of your parents from Burundi? Yeah, yeah all of them. All of them. Okay, yeah. so they, so you all are first generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, so how did like I'm just it's <laughs> I mean it's it's an amazing like, you know it's an amazing undertaking to try and be like mom dad this is what my life is like. Yeah. I want to know about what your life is like. Mm -hmm. um, how do we start to create this sort of partnership where we're sort of weaving these things together? Um, I would personally say that some parents are more understanding yeah, than others. Well, I would imagine, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> some parents are more understanding than others. And so um, that's why we really try to target the kids. Like all the kids have come to an understanding like, yes, our parents are like gonna have a hard time understanding this because when you've lived in a certain mindset for so long it's kind of hard to like double back and be like yeah so some parents understand um those that don't understand they pretty much like stopped coming to the Karundi school <laughs> okay <laughs> so, so it self selects yeah. out where they're like yeah they're like I'm yeah not i'm not into this yeah so yeah. have anybody come, has anybody like left and come back uh, a few a few yeah a few where left. they're like They've gone away and thought about it, and they're like, "Actually, I owe this to my yeah. kids. Yeah. I need to understand." And the thing is, the kids they want to come to school further because another thing is we're all separated. Mm -hmm. We're all separated, and the thing that gets everybody together is community school. And yeah. when you go to like public school, you kind of have to change yourself a little bit. Um, you kind of have to change yourself a little bit to fit into your American friends. But at community school, it's like, okay, we're all Burundi. Yeah, it's like, we're, we, yeah, we yeah. can all this relate to this. And this so, is like their chance yeah. to actually be together. It's their chance community. to also be yeah. together as a community. And we listen to because it's kind of hard to explain your issues to someone that doesn't get it. Yeah. You know, like I can't go to my school counselor and be like, yeah, my parents won't let me go out with my American friends. They think that I'm going to be doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of hard for them to open up to them because, like, you wouldn't understand your parents yeah. pretty much let you yeah. do whatever you like because they grew up with that mindset. So we're kind of like mentors in a way. Yeah. Um, Wait, you're mentoring your parents? No, mentoring, <laughs> mentoring the kids. I mean, it is, it is it's kind of sort of both. both. Um, yeah. Like, for my mom, she, like, I, I like to push buttons until you see my way because I don't have a problem admitting like yes I, know, that's I understand. What I love about you. <laughs> like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem admitting to like okay yeah you're right blah blah blah. But a lot of our Burundian parents they do have that. I wouldn't necessarily call it an issue, but they just they just um it's it's so different for them. For example, like some of them. Well, it's like it's like what you were saying. Like it's easier for you guys to learn mm -hmm. your native. 
a Burundian language mm. than it is for your parents yeah. to learn English. Yeah. Right? It's, it's just like when you get to be my age and older, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me to understand. Your brain is yeah. more like it's it's less it's nimble. Locked. Yeah. It's not less nimble. It's less flexible. It's like our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Like. You know, I was working last night and my body's sore and bending over hard. <laughs> but Chris, you, know, you like, do a lot of work though. Well, so. let's, we're not talking about that. <laughs> my point is that like brains are the same way, where they don't they don't flex and they're not as nimble and agile when you get to be 40, 60, mm. 70. So like, you know, trying to understand how you start pushing them, but not pushing them like... Too much. You know, yeah. like if I get my dad to come out and run sprints with us, he's going to pull a hamstring. <laughs> so like you don't push them that hard, mm -hmm. but you push them hard enough that, that mm -hmm. they like stay in shape yeah. and they, you know like they keep keep getting stronger and growing. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I think for example like for us like we're kind of first generation. For example like I kind of yes. understand like the life that my parents lived in Burundi, but then I kind of understand like my little siblings. So anytime that my mom and my little siblings have an issue, yeah, I kind of understand both. But you understand you understand too because you've gone back. Mm -hmm. Like have a lot of your. Like, Nima, have you been able to go back? Yeah, we went okay. back at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay, we met okay, each other. Okay. <laughs> so, like, I feel like that helps too. Yeah, Where, like, if you're does. growing up in a in a if you're growing up in Lexington and you're hearing about Burundi and you don't know what that looks like, you know that's a that's a different proposition than if you've gone back and like I know that you've gone back and like worked with the schools there and you've gone back and seen your parents' village and like gone mm -hmm. you know like that's a very different perspective on that connection between places mm -hmm. yeah all right you're speechless so we're gonna take a break <laughs> no, we, are, we are actually gonna take a break okay so uh, we're gonna take a break we're gonna be back with more from Aisha and Dai Shamie and Nima Eileen <laughs> you're gonna laugh every time but I'm gonna take that as a compliment this is the NLICDC radio hour on 93.9 WLXUFM we'll be back after this